Good morning, I'm Rob Haynes. I'm here with Steve and Sally from the Sunshine Coast Beekeepers Club. And we're going to show you how to um, make mini nukes. And this is for raising queens. Um, the mini nuke uses the least amount of resources to produce a mated queen. Um, and, and we're gonna show you how to do that. These are the mini nukes that we'll be stocking. Um, the, the screen here is, is a robbing screen and it's able to be blocked off. Normally the bees would come out the bottom, uh, but we can block this off for stocking and it still gives the bees ventilation through the screen. The, the cover is insulated. Inside we have a feeder and uh, right now there's two frames. So what we'll be doing is we'll be adding a cup full of bees and a, another frame with a queen cell attached to it. We'll also be using a, a QMP, queen mandibular pheromone, which apparently helps the, uh, the nukes retain the bees uh, for the first round of, uh, of queen rearing. Okay, we're gonna attach the queen cell to the frame. Of, and to do that, we're gonna use the candle. The queen cells are 10 days old from grafting. To do this, we melt the wax a little bit with the candle and then push the queen cell into the comb. The frame has a strip of QMP, queen mandibular pheromone, attached to it. And this will help uh, with the um, strain. The, the bees should stray less with that. Okay. Yep. Perfect. We have the baby nukes all set up, ready to go. We'll bring out the bulk bees. Once we do, it'll go fairly fast. We put one cup of bees into each mini nuke and then drop the frame with the queen cell right up against the feeder and then close up the mini nuke and move on to the next one. And uh, this is a paint sprayer because my hand sprayer broke. And this is, we, once we open up the box of bulk bees, we spray them down with water and that slows down how fast they fly. If, if they fly out, then uh, they're no good to us, but we have a, a nuke set up here and that should, all the bees that drift should end up in the nuke. Because um, that, that has a queen and the, the stray bees will, um, they'll look for a, a home to go to. If, if, if we don't have that, then they'll just pick a spot and just hang there until they perish. So uh, it's good. This is a really, really important thing to do when you have, uh, when you're handling bulk bees. This is the setup I use for shaking the bees. Uh, I would go into a colony, find the queen, set her aside, take the super, set it on top, and then just tap on, lift the frame and bang it down. And the bees fall down into uh, the lower box. And this screen, it has a, a bit of a chute on it. So they, um, most of the bees just stay in the box. And uh, the box that I bring out is, is like the bottom box. And uh, it should have a few bees in it. After I've collected the bees, I put them in a cold room in the dark for about 24 hours. Um, that just settles them down a little bit. Um, the box that I'm about to bring out, I, it appears as though it has a leak, so there might be a lot of bees on the outside of the box. That's uh, not normal, but that's what we got. So we'll see how it goes. It's 
it's not as bad as I thought. I probably need to give him a tap to get him off of the... Okay, are you ready, Sally? Sure. Go ahead. You could frame again, Sally. Done yet, Steve? No. Okay, one more. Unless we do, we have any more over here? No. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so now we're all done. We're going to uh, uh, put these in a cooler for four days. When a virgin queen first hatches, she doesn't give off the pheromones required to keep um, the bees from straying. So if we lock them up for four days, that allows the, uh, the queen cell to hatch and for the bees to bond with that virgin queen. Um, after four days, we set them out, preferably in uh, later in the evening or very early morning. And what you want to avoid is setting them out when it's bright out and uh, a lot of the bees will fly and, and get lost. So you, you want to do it at uh, daybreak and so the bees slowly wake up and, and fly out, orientate themselves um, and um, after a few days, I'll open them up, check that the queen cell is hatched. If it hasn't hatched, uh, then it, something was wrong with it. And uh, I can give them a new queen cell. And I also, at that time, space out the frames so that they draw a nice comb. So what keeps these mini nukes stable are, are, are several things. Um, there is a tendency for them to abscond if you leave a laying queen in them for so, too long. Because really, it's too small of a space for uh, a colony to be sustainable. So to prevent them from absconding with, with a, a laying queen, um, we take that queen away and we put it in a queen cell. The other thing to keep it stable is at no time should all of the frames be drawn out. So when I get that, um, I will often move a, f a frame of drawn out comb to another nuke um, just to keep the, the mini nuke stable. They should always have food and they should always have comb to draw out. I'm just stacking these up. These will go into the cooler and uh, we'll leave them there for, for four days. So any of these bees that are loose will most likely form a cluster in the center and uh, they'll, they'll figure out a home when we put them out in the, the mating yard. Okay, I'll put two more on there, then I'll carry that in. Those can just be carried. I can just throw them on top here. Perfect, okay. Hey? 
Um, temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius. So we have this nuke set up for um, attracting the, the bees that have drifted. Uh, this particular nuke I use as a queen bank. And uh, you can see I just lay the, the queens on top of it. They're really easy to access. And uh, I just have a, a board over top to protect the bees from the, the sun. You can see the bees are fanning at the entrance, so um, they'll definitely bring in the, the bees, the strays. All right, we've set these mini nukes up several weeks ago. They now have a mated queen. I actually brought these for the purpose of uh, documenting them uh, from a different yard. So normally, uh, if you're trying to catch the queen and she flies, then you could just close up the, the mating nuke again and she'll fly back in there and you can catch her at another later date. Um, so, if the queen flies, most likely she's lost here. Normally that's not a problem. So these were set up the same way, as you can see. Now they've drawn out all the frames and used up most of the feed. So there she is. And we'll uh, add um, several attendants. These are the ones that can sting you, so you've got to be a little more careful. How many have I got, Steve? I'm not counting, Rob. Sorry. I'll do one more for for good luck. There you go. So, and then just just for short-term storage, they can go right back into the. Okay, this uh, queen that we just caught, we'll we'll take her out now, and put her in the queen bank, and uh, I will use her a little bit uh, later on tonight. And I'll unite her with our leftover bulk bees and make a package. Now, this mating nuke is now ready to receive a, a capped queen cell, 10 days old. Uh, and I'll be doing that in the next couple days. Uh, it's not urgent because in the meantime, they'll just start drawing out their own cell. But it's the beauty of it. This mini nuke is actually very stable right now because... It's only chance of survival is if they raise a new queen. And uh, they'll do that with the queen cell that I add. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I will likely comment when I have the results of using the QMP, the queen mandibular pheromone. It's the first time I've used it and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.